I was trying to channel Bob the Builder with this outfit, and I have just realized it is giving more minions. <laughs> Ignore that, okay? Don't look at my outfit. Look at this giant pile of junk in front of me. You see this pile of clothes and home goods and uh, various other items? It is all stuff that needs to be mended, altered, displayed, transformed. There's a variety. But the point is, these are all things that need our help. So it's time to be productive, get some tasks done, and improve my wardrobe and my space. Let's get started. For our first project, first of all, I put my hair up. Sorry to ruin the continuity. But it's because I didn't want to get paint in my hair, and we are going to paint this t-shirt. I mentioned in a recent video that a lot of my favorite graphic tees have worn out over time, and my current collection is honestly kind of sad. And then I realized I had a little store of blank t-shirts stowed away for just such a DIY as this. Past Liz, she was so smart, always thinking ahead. This isn't even really going to be a full-on graphic tee like this one. It's going to be just a little mini graphic at the top. I've got my placement marked with chalk. I've got my paints out. I've got a sketch done. Here is my vision. So all that's left to do is paint. Painting on clothing is honestly one of my favorite ways to add decoration because you can't really feel it through the other side of the fabric, so it doesn't have any of the irritation of embroidery or thread or anything else that needs to be secured on the backside. And there's so much versatility to the detail and color you can add. I've been doing this for years and just using regular acrylic paint. Every time I tell people that, they are like, really? That works? Um, and I can't promise you that it will work perfectly on every fabric with every design every time, but for me, it's always worked out pretty well as long as the paint isn't too thick and you let it really set in for a good few days before you wash it. Y'all, I gotta say, very often when I paint my own designs, I end up being like, oh no, this looks awful. What am I doing? But I'm actually really happy with this one. I'm just gonna wait for it to dry. It might need a second coat on some parts, but we're just gonna leave this as is for the moment. While we're waiting for that, we're gonna open some packages. For my next project, I have really been wanting to improve and add to some of my home decor. So we're gonna hang up some new wall art that I'm super excited about from Poster Store, the sponsor of today's video. Poster Store sells so many different beautiful prints in basically every home decor style out there. They have such a wide variety and I loved getting to look through and pick out pieces that really resonate with me. I'm just so excited about them. I can't wait any longer. Let's open. Whoa. Oh my gosh, this feels really nice. It feels like an art print, not a poster. I also got frames in the perfect sizes to match all of my artworks. <gasps> wow, they're beautiful. Oh my gosh. I was so excited to see prints from some of my favorite iconic historical artists on Poster Store. So I picked two paintings from Hilma af Klint, who was an early 20th century Swedish painter who made these very beautiful, mystical, abstract paintings. And then I also have two pieces from William Morris, who was an English textile designer and artist in the mid 19th century. I also got this hippie long stocking illustration from the original novels, which I actually remember reading as a kid. So this was so fun to find on their site. It's so cute. And then I also got this little photography of a door because I liked this weird little hand knocker on it and I might put this near my door. So if you're into any of these same prints I'm into or if you want to check out the countless more that Poster Store has to offer, you can use my link in the description to go check them out and use my code BEEPRLED for 45% off prints and 10% off frames and personalized prints. But the code only works for the next month so now's the time. All right now it's time to frame these and get started deciding where I'm going to put them. I got the framing done. The frames were very easy to open and close, but still very secure, which was also a nice bonus. And then I started with the big gallery wall above my couch. This wall has sort of slowly built up over time, and I actually somewhat recently rearranged it, but I thought this Hilma F. Clint piece would blend with the other art seamlessly. So I ordered it specifically in this size to put in this spot with the help of a chair because even the couch was not tall enough for me to reach properly. Then I just had to rearrange some of the other art on the wall to make it all fit together even better. And now I am so in love with how this all looks together. Then I hung up the door photo next to my front door because I thought it was funny. And I added two more pieces to my bathroom, which I have really been thinking could use an upgrade. And I feel like these fit perfectly. 
Finally, it took me several days to land on a spot for this big William Morris piece because I kind of wanted it out in the living room, so you might see it out there later in this video, but I eventually realized it was actually the perfect size to hide our electrical box in the bedroom, so that is where it ended up, and I am so happy with it. Okay, sorry for the abrupt switch, but we're onto a new project here, and it is so insanely simple, I probably don't even need to explain it, but it is changing the clasp on this necklace. When I thrifted it, it had this hook that just hooks onto the chain, but doesn't really securely close, as you can see, and so I've been scared to wear it because I was worried that it would fall off. So, I just used my jewelry pliers to remove the hook and attach a lobster claw clasp instead. It really is that simple. I bent the metal loop open, slid the hook off, slid the clasp on, and bent the loop closed again. That's it. It doesn't look any different on, but now it's secure, and that is thrilling to me, a person who is always anxious I'm going to lose my jewelry. Hi, it's the next day. It's time to keep crafting. Our next project is another sort of home good decor-ish item. It's these hand towels. I just thrifted these and they're fine. They're functioning, but I'm hoping to make them better than fine. I'm hoping to transform them from fine into cute and trendy and slayful. So we're going to do a little embroidery. I actually asked you all over on Instagram what you thought would be the best way to decorate these and make them cuter without sacrificing the functionality. And a lot of people said embroidery specifically just around the edges, which is so smart because it'll be such a cute little decoration, but it won't interrupt the functionality of the towels at all. Thank you for that, you kind, intelligent, wonderful viewers. I think I just want to try doing like a little contrast color blanket stitch just along these short bottom edges because I really don't need it to be a lot or dramatic. I just want a little something that will add a little, a little style, some color, some flair if you will. So let's get into it. I've also never done a blanket stitch before, but today we're going to learn. Um, guys, why didn't you ever tell me how easy this stitch is? It is so simple to do and it looks so cute. I know it's usually used to functionally unite two pieces of fabric, but I think it's so cute just as decoration too. And I am just so pleased with these. It was also extremely fast and easy for just the edge of a towel. The only downside I had was tying off the ends in a way that they won't visibly be poking out from the other side. If anyone has any tips for that, please comment them because I just kind of had to leave them like that. And listen, I do still love them despite their imperfections, but I would love to improve in the future. Always learning, listening, growing, improving. So please leave me tips. All right, the towels are done. I think they look very cute. And my final project is this dress, which I am going to turn into a skirt. I honestly only thrifted this because I love the skirt part of it so much. The top half is giving absolutely nothing to me. And I was going to turn it into a skirt and then I asked you all in a video what you thought I should do. And then everyone said I should keep it as a dress. So I did. And listen, I'm not blaming you, but I never ever wear this. So today I am finally turning it into a skirt. So sorry if this is painful for you to watch, but for me, it is simply the right move. So I decided I wanted this to be a longer skirt just because I love a long skirt. I know I'll wear it more. So I basically just cut off the sleeves and then sewed the armholes shut to create the long rectangle skirt shape. Also, I saved those sleeves. So let me know if you have any ideas on what I should do with them. I could add them to anything. The sleeves are my oyster. After sewing the armholes closed and just like trimming off the extra fabric, I just sort of cut open the top where the head hole was to make that the waist opening. This was a very shapeless rectangular dress, so that really worked in my favor to make this process easy. This fabric is also super slippery and frays very easily, so for the first time ever, I actually bothered to zigzag stitch over all the raw hems. Everyone please clap for me. Thank you so much. I'm out of thread, so it's time for a midday craft store run, and I have brought my dress slash skirt with me to thread match. got the goods, back to it. Because I was taking a short dress and turning it into a long skirt, I really didn't want to take up any of the valuable and precious length on a waistband because then it would end up like knee length and then I wouldn't even like it. So 
I just did a super skinny minimal waistband with this thin elastic. I would love to maybe make a real waistband with like a different contrasting fabric someday. I don't know if that could work, but this time I just measured the elastic to stretch around my waist and then stretched it out to reach all the way around the big gaping waist opening and sewed it down while it was stretched out. So then once I let go, it would all scrunch together. And I also hemmed the raw edge in over the elastic at the same time. That was kind of it. Honestly, it sounds very simple, but I definitely messed up and had to adjust and troubleshoot numerous times, which I usually don't bother explaining because it's just so boring. But this is just your reminder that these things don't go as smoothly in real life as they appear in these videos, at least for me. So if you come across some issues, that's normal. You can figure it out. You're not failing at your DIY project. All right, y'all, all my little projects of the week are done. Did I actually do everything in my DIY pile? No, there's always more. So if you want to see more, let me know. But for now, let's reveal all the things I got done this week. I'm so pleased with all of them. First up, we have this plain red t-shirt I found in my fabric box, now transformed into, honestly, such a cute, dare I say, aesthetic top that looks kind of unbelievably more stylish. Truly, before, this shirt was not giving fashion at all, but then just adding a simple sort of contemporary graphic turns it into a piece that feels intentional and styled and makes this t-shirt and shorts combo feel like an actual outfit. I'm also literally wearing this shirt today as I record this voiceover and I'm so happy with it. Next, we have all of my art updates in my gallery wall and throughout my apartments, all of which have already been enriching my day-to-day -day experience in my own home. I love them all, especially how impactful they were in the bathroom. Like that space feels so much more intentional and cute and just pleasant to be in now. Of course, it helps that I also added these hand towels to the bathroom, which actually match so perfectly with this art print. It's crazy. I didn't even plan it, but now I'm like, getting so much serotonin from the wall above my toilet, of all places. Honestly, if you take one thing away from this video, let it be that making your bathroom a little cuter is worth the effort because, honestly, having this room I have to be in numerous times throughout the day be a little cozier and cuter just makes my day a little better. We also have this necklace, which does look exactly the same on, but I just had to remind you, we did it and made it more secure. Big win. And finally, we have this dress turned skirt, which I am just so excited to actually wear now. Like I said, I would love to add a more legit waistband, but I also think this waist tie from the original dress does a lot for the skirt to distract from the sort of wimpy waistband I created. And overall, I am still super happy with how this looks and feels. I also left the waist tie attachment loops on because honestly, I just thought it was kind of funny to leave them there halfway down the skirt. And then I even thought putting the tie through those loops to hang partway down could also be kind of cool and avant-garde. I don't know, but but I'm gonna have so much fun playing around with this. Thank you so much for joining me on this little DIYing journey. Please let me know what your favorite project was in the comments, if you plan to try any, if you have tried any. Oh, and if you do leave a comment, watch another video, like maybe this one right here, and subscribe to the channel. I heard that next time you stain your clothes while doing a DIY, it'll come out perfectly in the wash the first time. Not that I stain any of my clothes doing this. Okay, thanks for watching, bye.